Hello and welcome to another episode of The Wannabe Entrepreneur, the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. My name is Tiago and today I have a dear friend here in the podcast, someone that has been here before. His name is Dagobert. He's a dear friend and a dear member of the indie community. I've been talking with him since the beginning of this podcast and I've been following his journey. What I really like about Dagobert is the fact that he's really honest. Even though he has achieved incredible success both on Twitter and on the startups, that came with a cost. He ended up burning out in the beginning of the year. Just after we had our conversation about the success on his Twitter course. In this chat, Dago will explain everything that happened and will give really good tips on how to prevent this. We'll also learn more about Dago's new job and if he is or not planning on returning to the indie community. So, without any further ado, here's Dago. What's up, man? It's been a, a few few months, I guess. Uh, I'm doing weird, but I remember last time you said, okay, because like, you know, first time we did the interview, we were both like struggling. Uh, second time we did the interview, I had some success with my course, I think, and you were still struggling. And you told mm -hmm. me, okay, next time you're going to be like a millionaire. And you were like excited about that. And so the funny thing is like tables turned dramatically and I burnt out. Now I'm at a job. I'm back to a job. I don't have much money. And you are making a killing with your new app and being like part of the successful like you're probably gonna move to bali soon or whatever you're like <laughs> one of the successful indie founders now. and i love that i love that it's so well it's kind of yeah. random but it's also about you know you didn't give up and you kept you know persisting so i think that's very interesting yeah i mean i appreciate that um of course i'm i wouldn't say that i'm making a killing uh, I'm definitely better than than before. <laughs> I think now, I I can consider this like a profession, you know. Um, yeah. And it's paying the bills. It's still far from, you know, being something that I can just. Uh, yeah, you're relax. not rich or anything. Yeah, yeah, I'm not rich. I mean, so now we are making I think, hundred sixty thousand a year. Yeah. Which is really good. Uh, and if we split it by two, it's 80K, which again, yeah. it's, it's, it's really good. But then you have to remove all of the expenses and uh, it's not a sure thing as well. Um, so like if you take just the net amount, how much do you make? Like, like how much would you make a year like based on this 80? That's a very hard question. And I, like you I have tell the you taxes why. like in France, like it's so I think yeah. in Portugal, it's more permissive. But for example, with no, Lucy on Logology... Taxes are really bad, yeah. Okay. Uh, because with Logology, if we made 10K one month, we could pay ourselves, like if you remove everything, uh, probably 4K. Uh, you know, after all taxes, that's like fucking... Like, that's why also it was so hard. So I think when you live in like... Like if you just move out to like, uh, you know... Uh, Singapore or like country like yeah. that and you indie hack from there, then you, it's way easier, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you say 4K, is it 4K each or 4K in total? Total. Uh, total yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, to be honest, this, this will be more, I guess, a conversation than, than just a simple interview. Uh, but if, if you, if you have a little bit of, of patience in, and you want to listen to this story, I, I have to say that, Everything changed from the moment we decided to go, let's say, official. So when we first mm -hmm. started um, our like pod squeeze, we had this kind of well, we are official and we were paying taxes, but it was a different, a different scenario. Uh, we're like as individual entrepreneurs, and yeah. then we decided to create, a, you know, a proper company and, and make everything official and, and be partners. Wow, yeah. and, and and be partners. Yeah, right. It's uh, it's definitely. A very interesting relationship um but yeah it, it it was probably like four three to four months of a lot of frustration 
And a lot of our time was allocated in understanding the tax system. Oh, yeah, and, okay. And that was crazy. Uh, for the first, I think I've I've grown up more in terms of like adulthood in the past months than in the past <laughs> years because now I really realize how messed up our tax system is. Oh, yeah. So complex. You have like a thousand layers and specifics. Yeah. And it's just like... Yeah, it's it's crazy. And, you know, especially being an online company here in Portugal, most accountants, they don't understand this. They don't understand oh, that shit. we don't know okay. where our our customers are coming. Right. So maybe tomorrow there'll be customers from France. But then after there'll be customers from the US or from that was whatever, probably Bali. me because I, I, I subscribed to your product last week and I use it for my podcast. Oh, yeah, now. I saw it. Yeah. I saw <laughs> so it. That, that was it's me the guy from France. <laughs> yeah, I mean we have a few customers as well from France. I think the podcasting industry in France is, is growing. Yeah, and, it is, yeah. But yeah, for instance, VAT, it's different or the sales tax is different in each country and everything. So how to set all of these up and, and then understand taxes in a way that we can deduct as much as possible and, and take home as much as possible was really hard. It was a mess for us too. And something like Stripe, you know, helps you a bit. But... Now, you know, that I've sold my course on Gumroad, you mm -hmm. know, on which I'm literally think if I start a new SaaS, I'm not even going to use Stripe. I'm going to use Lemon Squeezy because Lemon Squeezy acts as a merchant of record like, like Gumroad. So that means okay. all of the burden of taxes is on them. Basically, uh, legally, your only customer is Lemon Squeezy. Oh, really? It's not like, like Gumroad. Like Gumroad, for example, I've had like more than a thousand, I think like 1,300 or like 1,400 customers, but I only have like basically one invoice a week to Gumroad. And I pay my, and that's like incredibly easy because now they take a bigger, you know, part of, and especially Gumroad, like they take a huge chunk, but Lemon Squeezy doesn't take that huge of a chunk. They take like maybe 5% on top of the payment processing. So maybe like 7%. But you don't okay. have any of that. like Because like for Logology, we have to pay an accountant and that's like 200 a, a month. So if you just pay Very Lemon Squeezy or mm -hmm. a merchant of records, you know, like Gumroad or Lemon Squeezy, there's probably a couple others, you don't even have to think of taxes. And, you only, and so it's also way easier for accounting because your only point of contact is Lemon Squeezy and that's who you pay. And that's who pays you. Sorry. And so... Wow. That's just that's, like, for me, that's, that's just like, you know, what I would do next time. Because I don't want, I mean, mm. until you have at least like 10K or maybe 20K revenue and then you can do some optimizations. Yeah. Dude, don't don't waste time on that. And and let me ask you something. Is Where is Lemon Squeezy based? Like which country? Oh, I actually, they're probably in Europe because I know, you know, my co-host James McKinvin mm. works with them. And he works a lot with people in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I would assume they're in Europe, but maybe not. We should check. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's but because... I, for, the, example, the v for example, VT... Gumroad, for example, Gumroad, they have a location for international and a location for Europe. So that's who you're going to ah, invoice. Okay. So I don't know how right. Lemon Squeezy handles it, but, you know... Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the only issue with, with Stripe is the VAT collection, right? So, for instance, in France... I think it's like 19%. In Portugal, it's 23%. In, no, France is more. I don't know. Like Germany was France is 19%. 20 now. Okay, France is 20 So each country is different. And we need to create an invoice for each different customer. Um, yeah. And basically, this invoice needs to come through a Portuguese you know, certified software. So Oh, I you have the to... obligation for that? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. I don't yeah. have that in France. I don't have that obligation. Yeah, you need that. So fortunately, this uh, software has an API. So I basically connected these two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so basically, it's, it's funny that most of our time for the past months was not dedicated to actually building a product and making the product better, was dedicated into making our company official, reduce taxes as maximum as possible. And to answer your initial question, which is uh, how much money are you actually going to make? Uh, I don't know. I don't know because the tax system is that complicated. It depends. So I, I can tell you roughly that uh, yeah. it's about, we need to pay about uh, 
uh, 21% plus 28%. Uh, and that's like almost 60% or almost 50% of taxes. Yeah. Um, of, and then you have but, your income tax, I assume. Uh, no, with this with this scenario, we don't have an income tax. Okay. Um, but of course, that then if we deduct a bunch of things, then our taxes also is reduced. You know, if, if yeah. we put some expenses in, in the company, uh, let's say, I don't yeah. know, here in Portugal, you can get um, money to eat. So every every day you get like a little fee that you can use yeah. for, for your see. meals and everything. So that it's not taxed. So it's so complicated that I it, it, there's no way for me to literally tell you how much will I get in the end and of the so month. Like, shouldn't you get an accountant? Because like... No, yeah, it's mandatory. Have... We have, yeah. Oh, okay. Because like, yeah, that's like a, a mess otherwise. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna you're like so you're personally you're making basically forty to fifty k right now a year. Uh like maybe around fifty k. Something yes. like that. It's not bad. It's really it's good. Uh, and in comparison yeah, like with, it's a, not with rich. a paycheck, yeah, it's and not you know, rich. Because no, like no. it's interesting because like one of the reasons I burnt out is that I was so obsessed with like reaching ten k per month, and when I realized because there was two of us, we were mm. literally, I mean, just above being poor, not nothing more. Like we couldn't afford shit, yeah. you know? That was so shocking to me that that's one of the reasons I burn out because I, I was so, I, I, I had this goal of like 10K, 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 because it seemed like, and, and I was, it, would, it would be solving a lot of problems and I realized it didn't. And that was very hard to to accept, you know, mm -hmm. especially since it's not recurring revenue. So every month you have to fight yeah. for it. So, you know, it's a different game, too. But that's a different game. So one thing that, you know, assures me a little bit and, and gives me peace of mind is that for me, it's recurrent. So it won't go to zero from one month to the other. It it will take, you know, it will take months until. Well, it, it I, you know, zero. I don't want to be a, a dickhead or anything, but it is actually possible. Look at what happened to people <laughs> yeah, who true. had yeah, yeah, working yeah, yeah. on the Twitter API. So yeah. it's not likely, but it's possible. You never that's know. True. Like, yeah. Because I don't true. know what you're using. You're probably using an AI, you know, uh, yeah. API. AI. So mm -hmm. you don't you don't know. You know, they can change something and Yeah, boom. sure. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I'm not saying it's likely. I'm saying, you know, there's like five percent chance or something. Yeah, there so. is, there is. Yeah. And it's something that we we keep it in mind for sure. But okay. If there are some chances to go, of going to zero, but in general, uh, if everything goes well, it's not that we like like you did. You need to like every yeah. month, every month wake up and let's like start. You, you would over, have at least know? six months to one year yeah. of like slowly going down. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm quite quite in peace with it. Um, yeah, I bet you sound peaceful. You sound like you're like chill, and which makes yeah. sense because you have like kind of like recurring revenue, so it's pretty. It's pretty yeah. awesome. I found my dream job and it's it's, yeah. it's paying the bill. So it's I, I'm happy. And uh it's been more than two years of you know doing this. And I don't know, I'm I'm used to this now. I, I'm I'm okay with it. We, I accept the risks of the profession and uh yeah. and I have confidence that again I can always make some money even if I if I need to, you know, freelance or, or yeah, you can else. always freelance or something, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but tell me tell me something because so last time we talked, we were as you mentioned in the beginning of our chat, we were celebrating your course and and making reaching 10k, uh, and then not long after that you announced to the world that you were going to step out and you found a job and you're really happy and excited about it and you also announced you, know, you spoke openly about your burnout. Can you like make the bridge? From you know our last conversation to the burnout to making this decision, like what happened between then? Yeah, so I think it's funny. I didn't. I think I burnt out um, because, as I said earlier, I noticed the success that we've had uh, mm -hmm. didn't solve what I thought it would solve, and so it started unwinding in my in my head. And then, very shortly after, I noticed, oh, nothing is solved. Like because we didn't build anything that was recurring, uh, I still had to mm -hmm. grind like 50, 60 hours a week. Uh, I had terrible pressure with Twitter, um, especially since our money was depending on the course and 
Yeah. Elon Musk had bought the platform, made crazy changes. Lots of people ran away. Um, like, it, it was, I think I was unlucky in that my course came out, you know, too late, kind of. So even coming out too late, you know, it still made, you know, it made like 80K. So like, it didn't go bad. Like, it, it's not, it's good. It's awesome. But if it, if it had came out like two years earlier, it could have made like 200K, you know? Yeah. Uh, so there was this thing of like always fighting. Um, and again, having logology, which wasn't recurring, having the course, which wasn't recurring and depending so much on Twitter for everything, for the course, obviously, but for also the traffic, I had spent so much time on it and neglected yeah. all of the other marketing channels right. that, and I think it was around January, February, because I had my burn on like mid February, but like January, I started noticing dude, like we're, we we don't have as much engagement as before. Like we have way less impressions, uh, like everyone, people mm -hmm. are leaving. Um, and so way less traffic to my products, way less sales. And so that started to eat at me. And, and then I remember one, one night with Lucy, we were like sleeping and we, and she saw like some news about Elon Musk at like two in the morning. And she was so stressed out because, you know, it was announcing, you know, I don't remember, like one of the dramas, like one of the earliest drama, which was, I think, about uh, verification badges that were given to anyone yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. And so she saw that like on, on the mainstream French news website. So like a big, that, that was a very big deal. And she saw that and she knew, you know, obviously that we depended on it so much. And so everybody living to, I mean, it seemed like a lot of people were living to Mastodon and shit. And so it was just so stressful. Like we, she woke me up in the middle of the night and she couldn't sleep for the rest of the night because we knew mm. we were like at the throat of this thing. So I think basically the reason of this burnout is uh, we had built on very, uh, we didn't have strong foundations. You know, I had built yeah. up a castle on sand basically. And it was a yeah. beautiful castle. I worked my ass off. It was awesome, but it was built on sand. So eventually mm -hmm. the sand, like it just fucking collapsed. Like eventually mm -hmm. it had to, it had to. Uh, and so it's, it's not that it collapsed, it's that I collapsed because it was exactly. the only thing that was making sure the castle didn't collapse was the sheer force of me overworking all the time. And eventually I, my body, I mean, mentally I was in this state where I would have never stopped. Like mentally nothing could have stopped me, but my body like, broke down because like i i was going too far mm -hmm. and can you describe w what does it mean for your body to break down well like what were the symptoms okay of that? so basically i woke up one day and it's funny because like the the day before i had walked like 10 uh yeah 10 kilometers no yes i think i walked about 10 kilometers so like a big mm -hmm. walking day I was like in shape. We had we had bought our first car, so that was like very exciting. I went, we went to have dinner with a friend at a nice hip place. So like very mm -hmm. good day, good shape. Uh, next day or like the day after, because it was the weekend, so maybe the Sunday was still good. Next day I wake up, and like I I get up and I feel a bit weird, but I don't really know why. And mm -hmm. then eventually I kind of like check my pulse and I see that like my heart is like just racing, but like really, really racing. Uh, so I'm like, okay, this is just like whatever. So again, I keep pushing. So I'm like, I'm going to push through. So I go to get some groceries. So I go walk outside and my heart doesn't stop racing. And so I end up like almost fainting, uh, but I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to keep going anyway. So I keep going uh, to get the groceries. I almost faint again. Um, then I go back home, uh, finally, after like an hour or so. And then I really like, then I start having this weird feeling like in my whole body where like, um, how to describe it? It's like, um, you know, when you can't feel uh, your, your like your hand or like something because mm, like the, blood number, isn't, lem, the blood lemness. isn't going to it. And then you have some weird, you know, yeah, uh, tingling, tingling, tingling. Yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was basically my whole body was like that tingling. Wow. 
like my head, especially my head. I never had tingling in my head, but like my whole head was tingling basically and my whole body. And I, I eventually I, I couldn't breathe because my heart was beating so fast. Uh, so I started lying down and then I realized the, that the only way, then I quickly bought like a, I use, you know, the company money to buy mm -hmm. an Apple Watch so I could expense it. So I expensed it and I bought an Apple Watch to track my heart rate. And okay. then after a couple of days, I got the watch and I, and I was still resting. And then I started noticing that it was just like constantly. So the only way to not get my heart in this state was to stay lying down. Like even sitting, that was like, I, I was going way too high. Um, but so, so the, the only symptoms you had were, you know, the tingling and your heart was beating really fast. Did you feel like anxiety somehow? Yeah, that was major anxiety, actually, I think. But I didn't really understand or understood it at the time. But that was, yeah, that was, uh, that was anxiety, basically. And, but I, okay. I, I did, at this point, I didn't realize it was burnout. And so for the next five weeks, I basically kept working, but like lying down. And I thought it was long COVID. So I was studying long COVID and I was very similar symptoms. Every yeah. time I was going from, you know, lying down on my bed to standing, I would be like, I couldn't, uh, like when I was in the kitchen to cook something, I had to sit, like I, I had put a chair so I could cook. Uh, you know, all of these things, I couldn't go out because we ha anymore because we had like three stairs of steps. You know, we don't have an elevator. So... Uh, we had like it was too much for me it's crazy uh, did you go so, to a doctor yeah but like they couldn't find anything my doctor was like yeah it's probably long covid i'm like okay cool uh, i mean cool but like mm -hmm. so i started you know geeking out on long covid i was convinced it was it they tested my uh, you know blood my heart uh, there was nothing everything was fine um and then eventually i wasn't getting any better um I basically thought, okay, that's just going to be like two years of long COVID ahead of me or something, you know, started, you know, looking at documentaries about people who had it and it didn't seem very positive at all. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the year before I had COVID and it lasted for months. So that's yeah. why I also thought that was possible. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it never crossed your mind that could be somehow connected with stress or mental health? Absolutely not. Because I remember I was telling myself, and it took, and that's why I, this burnout taught me so much is that I was telling myself, I can't be burning out because people were telling me maybe it's burnout. And I'm like, no, it's, it can't be because, you know, I'm in charge of what I do. Like I, I I'm like free. I don't have a boss yeah. or anything. Yeah. So I didn't think it was possible. So Lucy called a friend of hers and told her about the situation because it had been five weeks and I can't do anything almost because I'm always tired. Uh, I can't even work eventually, even from my bed, because I'm too tired, I'm too exhausted all the time, too stressed. I mean, not really understanding it's stress, but like too in bad shape. And she calls a friend and tells her about it. And she tells her that her husband went through a very similar thing, because like me, he is always working, but always loving it. And that was mm -hmm. the trap for me is that because I, I enjoy it. I kind yeah. of like enjoy the pain. I really do. Like I taught myself how to enjoy the pain basically. And he, and uh, my, you know, this friend's husband is the same. And so one day he and his doctor immediately said that he was like burning out. And so when she said that, and I'm so similar to this guy in my behavior, I was like, oh yeah, okay. It's probably burnout. Because like, that was like everybody who was telling me it's burnout. It's not people who have the same personality as me. So I was like dismissing it. But this right. guy, I was like, okay, this guy works even harder than me. So, and he doesn't like very similar personality. So I was like, okay, I'm listening. And, and then it's funny, like the day I told myself I had burnout, the next day, my symptoms basically got better 50%. Wow. Because just accepting it, uh, it just removed a lot of stress and anxiety about what it was. And if it's like, I don't know, like it really helped me to just, say to myself it's burnout and so when i noticed that i knew it was burnout because like it like immediately changed something you know in my uh, in how i, I guess felt. i guess you were worried as well right because if you didn't think it was if you thought it was long covid and I, you're probably like just researching and you think okay this is shit when i when i knew it was burnout i was like oh shit it's burnout awesome you know it's something i can manage uh, even though since then I learned yeah. it's way harder, but at least, mm -hmm. you know, I'm getting better now.
But yeah, you know, how um, how did uh, Lucy, you know, witness this whole process? Like when when you started first telling her about your symptoms and how you're feeling that you couldn't get up. Like so, it was very hard for her because she was uh, very worried, but also because basically overnight I couldn't run the business anymore, mm -hmm. and it there was so much that was depending on me that basically the business stopped, and so for her that was so stressful, which I understand, and she was also like very angry that I didn't plan ahead and like gave her you know more things to handle so that she could handle herself i was yeah. basically taking everything on my shoulders and in which respect there was two reasons for me doing that it was first it was a real belief that i wanted to help and to avoid her having all of this pressure i really mm -hmm. wanted to kind of like protect her there was a lot of that but there was also the thing where like i wanted to be in charge of everything you know i wanted to control everything you know Uh, so there was these two uh, mm. different energies that led me to not delegate, not like uh, basically Lucy, the, the only thing she was doing, she was just designing shit. That was it. She was designing yeah. logos and stuff. Yeah. And that was it. Like she wasn't doing any of the marketing, any of the business, uh, any of the accounting, any of yeah. anything except the tiny, the even the product that was me. So she was just doing the design of the logos. Mm -hmm. The, the way she went through that was very, uh, you know, she was supportive and she was yeah, like, mixed feelings. Like, but like at the same time, she was like, well, also she went through a bad time because basically that's her business too, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so, well, it kind of like collapsed and she couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. You know, because it was depending on Twitter so much and I couldn't do Twitter and she can't do it, you know, the same I, I do. Yeah. So there was no, no chance of really picking it back up significantly, you know. What I think is interesting is, um, you know, I've, I've felt stressed before with, with my business and I could always connect either if it was because I was not making money or um, because there was just a lot to a lot of work to do and I could feel it. Um, and the fact that you didn't notice this makes me believe or makes me think that you just got used to this. You just got used to living in this constant stress and you thought it was normal. Can you relate to that? Exactly. There's a trap to doing this in the hacking or entrepreneurship is that mm -hmm. you have to be in denial initially because you're against huge odds. Like even like mm -hmm. you or any indie hacker, you have to be in kind of denial uh, to be optimistic. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be in denial that you have very little chance of success it's completely stupid com like in terms of like financial decision compared to just having a job nobody's believing in you you know all of this shit you have to be kind of like delusional a bit uh, yeah. to keep going you have to be sure. dreaming you know you have to be living in kind of like a fantasy and I think that the trick is to only be in that mindset for like let's say 18 months You know, but if mm. after 18 months of being delusional, it didn't pay off, then maybe stop there. And the problem mm. is I, I did that for five years. So yeah. eventually my, yeah, and that's exactly what you said. Like my body changed because, you know, you live in denial for five years about something, um, you know, you, you things that weren't normal become normal like to give you an example that is a very bad example that i'm ashamed of mm -hmm. but like three months before burnout i got angry which i never do i never get angry usually i got angry for nothing at lucy and i almost hit her well and i was that never happened to me to want to hit i mean <laughs> someone let alone my wife yeah uh that i love like it didn't make any sense But I really could have hit her and I didn't, mm -hmm. but you know, it was close. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and that's the result of living for so long. And that should have alerted me, obviously, which it didn't mm -hmm. really, but it should have. Uh, and I, and now that I look into like, I studied burnout and I see like, it's a common thing that can happen, you know, in, uh, when you're on the verge of really, you know, burning out. Yeah. 
uh, emotions are starting to get out of whack. You know, mm. you can't control them as easily. Like, for example, yes. now, like it's been so it's been like about eight months. And I, I have like, for example, if I do a little bit of like physical activity, like mm -hmm. with some intensity and, you know, it releases endorphins, you know, like mm -hmm. some things that feel good. Well, now when I have endorphins, I, I sleep like I used to be happy. Now I just sleep and I can't get up like for hours. So like I can't do any intense physical activity that's going to release endorphins for like eight months because my system of like hormones and emotions and shit is like, I basically kept, uh, you know, fucking it up for five years. I kept yeah. denying the needs of my body. So my body changed to adapt to that, but now it's fucked up. Now it's completely, you know, kind of like broken. Yeah. And it's over time that I'm kind of like re-educating it. And now it's getting, and I finally, for only one or two weeks now, I can handle a bit of that again. Mm -hmm. But it's just to tell you that it's about your emotions and your hormones and how basically by always denying what my body wanted, which is rest and relaxation and times without stress. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, eventually, uh, you know, it, it just, it just breaks down. Mm -hmm. Tell me how did that change the moment or once you, you understood that you were having a burnout, like, did you finally look back and decide, okay, how can I fix this? Like, what was the process? So, yeah, initially I was keen on fixing it for a couple of months. I think I thought, okay, I'm going to try to fix it. But like every time I, I opened Twitter, I had like a panic attack, like PTSD, because mm -hmm. I was putting, because again, since, I mean, Twitter in itself is manageable, but the fact that we were depending on Twitter for any kind of income, that meant I had to go viral. Uh, every, every time I post, I was under pressure to go viral. I had to engage with like hundreds of people a day. Uh, even if I'm not in a good mood, I have to be, you know, uh, you know, acting nice and giving a shit about people even when I don't want to. And so all of these things, uh, I couldn't open Twitter. So eventually I had to stop because it was mm -hmm. just too stressful. So I basically gave up on Twitter for a few months. I'm recently coming back and I enjoy it now because, you mm -hmm. know, I have moved on uh but so yeah so i tried to do that and at the same time without twitter there was really no point because to build up the next step of logology without twitter we would have to build you know to start seo from the ground up to start like yeah and so it was like too big of a climb you know like it was too high with like mm -hmm. the energy that i had because i couldn't work mo much because i was too tired all the time and so, you know, eventually I was like, you know, fuck this. I stopped thinking about it and I was just, and I just started to think, I'm just going to try to solve this burnout. So this became my project for like a, three months where I basically spent my time uh, meditating, journaling, doing kind of like therapy on myself. Now I even have mm -hmm. an actual therapist too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I started thinking, okay, this is way deeper than I thought. Uh, I can't just go back to work. Uh, this is, this is not like I'm going to change. Uh, I'm just, it's not just about, I'm going to stop working as much. It's like, it's way deeper. Like, uh, you know, I was putting myself under such a, a huge pressure that yeah. eventually I was like, okay, you know, let's, let's stop this. Let's stop. Mm -hmm. And, you know. And in the meantime, you were leaving out of your savings again, right? While you were, you were stopped. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we only stopped for a couple for basically, uh, no, because we still had some, uh, cash on the company because of the right. money made from the course. So right. we could still pay ourselves. A, basically we had money to pay ourselves a salary up to October. So we still had like mm -hmm. something like six months. Okay. So, and we okay. still had like, uh, enough savings for like one, a bit more than a year. Mm -hmm. So so that so i could be so i could do that like there was a i had some room to do that to you know to mm. explore uh, but that was a very tough time for lucy though because again she couldn't do anything to move the needle forward so she like was designing logos but that was kind of like pointless um yeah and yeah it was very hard to realize for her that 
I had, and it was mostly my fault. I had built, we had built a system where like, without me, nothing works, you know, yeah. nothing happens when we should have like, instead of like spending all my time on Twitter, I should have split my time Twitter and SEO because she's writing the, she could be writing the articles. So she could mm -hmm. be every week writing some blog articles. I do some Twitter and we grow on both fronts. And then, you know, we are more stable, for example. Or also we could have, if we had, I mean, now with the hindsight, should have definitely focused on a product that is about recurring revenue or at least yeah. easier to sell, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, from the beginning. But that's only in hindsight mm. that we see how yeah. important it is. I mean, I can imagine her, like your point of view and, and like how stressed she must have felt because, you know, uh, she was oh, trying yeah. to do what she was trained, what she always did for the business, you know, designing and what she did really well. And at the same time, uh, her, her partner was, you know, journaling and, and meditating, which of course I understand is something that is important, yeah. but I can see like, okay, it's frustrating. And then after, you know, three, four months, I don't, I don't really know. You said, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I will find a job. So I can see also in, in her perspective, uh, how stress, stressful and frustrating that whole process could have been not by your fault, of course, you know, uh, but I, I do, I do said that, see that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think the good thing about the job is that once I went in that direction, there was this, uh, safety that of like having money again for both yeah. of us. So that was a relief to be like, oh, okay. We don't have to like be stressed all the time because now there's like a stable income that can cover expenses for both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause you know, uh, I'm lucky enough that I can find a job that's, you know, paying well. So how, how did that feel, you know, to, to suddenly have this money, this, you know, certain money that you don't actually need to work so hard for? Yeah, that's crazy. That, that's the craziest part. And, you know, we're in France, so like we have incredible benefits. Like yeah. After six weeks, I took like 10 weeks, 10 days off and it was paid, <laughs> you know, so that was like, <laughs> fuck. And that was normal. I was, you yeah. know, and right now, for example, it's like been four months that I'm at this job and I still have like, I think like I have 10 days that I can take off whenever I want now. And I'm getting like five more, like three more days each month or something. So, um, so that was weird because the, fir the first couple of months I didn't really understand. I didn't really realize. And then the third time I got a salary in August, uh, it really started hitting me. And I was like, Wow, you know, because especially like the first couple of weeks, I was putting myself under pressure to perform mm -hmm. because I wanted to, you know, uh, prove them that they were, had made the good choice by yeah. hiring me. But then after a while, I saw that, yeah, I was performing. Uh, they were liking me. It was kind of like, you know, it was really easy, you know, to to work. It's really easy mm -hmm. to work at the startup. And so, yeah, it was chill. I could just be like, you know, challenged. Like It's a bit challenging, but it's like, you know, compared to logology, it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to perform. There's a team where like, there's not just me. I don't have all the responsibilities on my shoulder, like not at all. So yeah. Yeah. And I get paid way more. Like, cause like basically I make 4k net every wow. month plus all of the benefits, which is like, uh, in total it's like seven and a half weeks paid, uh, you know, of time off, mm. uh, then pay time off if you take everything into account then i have like 200 euros a month uh, just to buy food you know yeah. just to mm -hmm. uh, so like so it's like the other day i was sick i could just like yeah i'm sick so i don't go for like three days and like i'm not paid obviously but i can just stop you know yeah because like with logology, you're making me when, jealous just, just yeah i bet because like when i was in logology <laughs> when i was sick well I'm, I can't do, I, I can't stop because like I need to tweet yeah. today. I need to like, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. then I can like, but like with this company, I can just stop and it's okay, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. And so now, for example, I go to a therapist and she's amazing, but like she only is available for me uh, Friday afternoon. And right. I go to see her once every couple of weeks. Well, mm -hmm. what I do, I just take paid time off half a day every uh, once like once every two fridays afternoon and that's it so i don't work uh, friday afternoon ev every two weeks and mm -hmm. i still get paid uh you know uh, so 
and it's yeah. just like crazy so yeah so and the funny thing is like and they even gave me some shares of the company because they really wanted me to come in mm -hmm. so what is the, tell me more about the job like what is this company about like what, what is your role okay so the company is called abyssal so it's a b y double s, -S a l e and it's okay. basically you know banner bear you know yeah yeah uh, mm -hmm. well it's like banner bear except banner bear is really tailored for like uh, devs and indie hackers mm -hmm. and for us it's a similar product but it's uh, really for marketing agencies so not for people who are you know comfortable with coding yeah. so it's basically a way to generate uh, tons of visual assets uh, right. for any kind of marketing campaigns but automatically you know basically instead of like having to create the same uh Uh, campaign for like you know 50 different formats like you have to create yeah. a visual for like uh, you know a story on instagram a story on snapchat mm -hmm. facebook ads youtube ads uh, google ads you know all of these things you can just like create a template once and then change the data and yeah. you know using a simple interface and then it's going to generate like the hundreds and you can also do that to like different countries different translations so basically you create campaigns like 100 times faster if you're in marketing mm. or... i mean i know this well because we we introduced the possibility on, on pod squeeze to create videos and i was i was checking banner bear i check i end up using another tool called creatomate again uh we need okay. more you know the api usage and everything yeah. but it's definitely a very interesting business you know because it saves a lot of time and suddenly yeah. people that are not designers they can design or they, they can create a bunch of assets really fast so that's that's really cool Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah, so that's there's basically like a market with like about about like five to ten players uh, mm. with different kind of like uh, target markets. Yeah, w what is the role that you that you took over? Oh, so I got in as a product manager. So what you're okay. supposed to do as a which I had never done before, but like they're awesome. They basically took me in as if I was like a senior product manager, even though I never did that before. Uh, because they knew me from Twitter, so they knew what I could do. They saw, you know, everything I had went through, so they trusted me. Mm -hmm. But, like, the funny thing is that I spent the first three months doing marketing because they weren't <laughs> very good at marketing. And I was like, we really need to fix this. And they're like, yeah, do it. Like, and that's why I love this job. Is like I basically have complete autonomy. That's like, my cool. goal, my role is basically to, because basically they raised money. Like, they raised, uh, I mean, we raised, but that was before I got in. Uh, mm -hmm. 1.5 million like in February oh. mm -hmm. and the goal is like to raise like a, so like a series A whatever it is in like one year okay. so we need to grow significantly and so for that they're like I'm telling them yeah but guys we need to take huge risk if we want to grow you know a lot we need to make big changes all that and they're like yeah do it like we we're gonna wow. follow you and so I noticed it's crazy because I'm basically leading Uh, well, the product and the marketing. So that's just like, <laughs> wow, I'm, it feels like I can do everything. And the thing I love the most is that there's like, how many, like four developers, two designers, uh, three salespeople, and one guy's for the operations. Mm -hmm. And so like, literally, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to have an idea for marketing. I'm going to think about, okay, this is what we need in the product because it's going to sell because now that I understand after a few months, our target market, I know this feature is going to sell. So I, I start specking the feature, like laying out how it's going to look like. Then two weeks later, it's online. And it's like, and it's good because the developers went through it, the designers did it. And mm -hmm. now we have a nice feature. Like we have like a small team of like 10 people. And that's just like perfection in terms of like speed, velocity, and mm -hmm. autonomy. So yeah, I'm blown away that I, I like this job. I, I used to surprise somehow that to realize that basically these past five years you have learned a lot of skills oh, that yeah. are actually really you know helpful uh, and wanted by the job market yeah i think for a while i didn't realize i, I kept thinking if i go back i'm gonna have to be a developer again yeah but i think another thing that changed is that with the burnout i'm really not willing to do something that i don't really want to do anymore you know Mm -hmm. And I really don't want to spend time coding that much anymore because I find it uh, not as fulfilling as focusing on product marketing. And, you know, basically, I think it's closer to like moving the business forward. So I'm more interested in yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and that's awesome too. But that's awesome because since I was a developer for so long, like when I talk to the developers, like 
I understand what they say. Like I can, and, and I can talk, like I can yeah. go pretty deep That's in technical answer. terms. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I am also, I, I did years of designing plus, you know, mm -hmm. there's Lucy. So she taught me a lot. So yeah. uh, when I talk with the designers, I, I can design too. So I hold my own. And so, and with marketing, you know, with all the marketing I did for Logology, with Twitter and everything I learned and for my course, well, they also listen to me for marketing. So I basically have this kind of like, uh, you know, uh, all encompassing vision of like mm -hmm. everything I can bring to the table. Yeah. And so for the first few months I did marketing because I thought that was the most useful to get growth. And now I'm doing product. Uh, a month from now, I think uh, I'm basically trying to define a lot of features that are going to help us. And then while the devs are building it, I'm going to do some, uh, you know, uh, copywriting again and, you know, stuff like that. So it, it's crazy the amount of trust that they are putting in you. I mean, it's not crazy because, of course, you are um, you're an entrepreneur, a seasoned entrepreneur. But at the same time, like, why do you think they are trusting in you so much? Is it because like what they've seen, what you've built? Your Twitter okay. account. So th that's like an alignment of everything. But uh, so this job offering was recommended to me by a friend Oli that I met uh, that I met on Twitter, and mm -hmm. he told me, and he knew the founder of Abyssal, and he told me, um, you know, they had, they were looking for a product manager, and since I had burnout, maybe I could try that. So you know, I went on LinkedIn and. And then he basically introduced me to the founder and the founder actually followed me on Twitter and he mm. loved the memes and he yeah. thought it was awesome. So we basically spent two hours talking and I was like, hmm, this guy is interesting, you know, because I was really like hesitant and thinking, oh, it's going to be a startup. It's going to be, and especially it was French and like a French yeah. startup. I'm like, uh, you know, it's a lot about usually French startup. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very VC oriented, like really mm. trying to look good instead of like doing a good product. Right. Uh, and I, I mean, it's probably not just French, you know, but like at least I had a bad kind of like uh, bias against it, but yeah. I was still open. And this guy after two, two hours with the founder was cool. Then I met with that, got like three co-founders. I met basically with the other one who is the CTO and it was cool too. And I think the main thing is that, well, I don't know how to put it a different way, but they really see that, I mean, it's obvious that I know what I'm talking about, basically. Mm -hmm. Because like when I talk about something, I'm very convincing because I really like, I mean, when I talk about marketing, they can see immediately that, okay, he's the real deal. He's the real deal. And like, if yeah. they have some doubts, I can bring up, uh, dude, I did my fucking Twitter course, crazy conversion rates. I know how to do this shit, you know? Yeah. And yeah. now it's even better because like I, they, they didn't want to, because like I basically redid their homepage and now it's online and I didn't want them uh, and they, they just wanted me to do the homepage and I was like no no no, no. we're gonna a b test it <laughs> so we can learn but what I didn't expect is that because the a b a b test was very significantly better now there's like even more proof that I know my shit because like we yeah. had like yeah 35 or 40 percent uh, you know improvement with just that your uh, your experience is also great for you know my listeners and the other indie hackers out there to learn that it's not in vain. You know, like when you are like two years, one year, whatever, five years working in your own projects and it might seem, it might seem that you are not going anywhere. You know, a lot of people, they don't, they don't find even, you know, any success, yeah. uh, but they are learning something and it's That's really it. cool. But you got to learn, you got to like, keep, you got to yeah. keep like putting yourself in danger, taking risk and trying yeah. things. Yeah. And then you learn like, and, and, and yeah, and then, and then, you know, like, for example, my resume doesn't really look good, but he didn't even look at it because once I started, we started talking, yeah. they could immediately notice that I got it, you know? Yeah, he and, knows, he knows this and, shit. <laughs> and, like, and that's like the deep, uh, the deep thing when you really have been through the fire, you know, mm -hmm. you've been through the fire of like building a startup, failing, yeah. failing with marketing, failing with product. And now, you know. And so, yeah, that's what you said. Like, it's not in vain. And you can, you can, you yes. know, like, the, what's the sentence? I think it's like, real, recognize real. You know, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You, you can see when somebody, game you know, recognize game, yeah. you, you can you really know, see it. So, like, and, and that's now, well. now the thing, the thing I want to say, though, is that it's mm -hmm. a startup. So, because of that, they're small. Like, yeah. and so, because they're small, I'm talking directly every day with the founders. 
Yeah. You know, that's the people I work with the most is the founders. So the reason I'm saying that is that if a bigger you were, company is different in yeah. a bigger company. Because yeah, like yeah. if I looked at if, if I went to like a 200 people company uh, and I applied as a product manager, maybe the guy hiring me wouldn't have valued any of these things. Yeah. He would have just thought, oh, you never did product management before. Yeah. And you know? they don't even want entrepreneurs in bigger companies. Yeah. Too. And they I don't want bigger that. Companies, they want like, do whatever you're told. You know, we, we have enough people exactly. you know, calling yeah. the shots. And that's funny you say that because like I almost never do what I'm told at this company, but yeah. they love it because they don't care. Like they don't want to tell me. They just want me to do things that are useful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I think the key thing to keep in mind is that it works if you then go to like to a start small a startup company, yeah. and and then you get work directly with founders, and then then mm -hmm. it can be highly uh, you know valued. Yeah. How how did this success? change the way you see yourself you know because quite often we connect our professional success with our personal success and i i felt like when, when suddenly potsky started giving money i felt like more confident then my co-founder the same joan was like now i can i can look people in the eye like this is a real a real thing uh did this also like did you feel this that suddenly you are waking up with more energy happier and and with more trust in yourself the very thing I noticed recently is that it's easy now. A life feels easy. Like working feels easy. Even mm -hmm. Twitter feels easy because like it removes the pressure of like making money. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like even if I'm just like having a good week, like not being at the top of my game 120% all the time, if I'm just mm -hmm. like uh, at least 70%, uh, and most of the time I try to be a hundred, obviously, but like sometimes I'm going to be 70 because, you know, it's just like a couple of days that I'm not at my best. Yeah. It's normal. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's normal. Well, you know, it's okay. And it's okay. And there's nothing wrong with it. And we still make progress. So for me, yeah, it made me, you know, start to really relax in life and be able to kind of like think of projects in terms of like, I really understand this work-life balance thing now, which I really wasn't understanding yeah. <laughs> for years. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh yeah, I see the value of that now. Okay, that's cool. Because mm -hmm. I th and I think a bit a, deep, a deeper thing that it taught me is that obviously you need to grind, you know, for a while when you try a startup, but like, but if you need to grind for years and you don't have work-life balance and you're not getting anywhere. Well, maybe the product isn't good enough. Maybe it's not a good market. Maybe like, maybe you're wrong. Maybe like, you know, and for Logology, that's what I kind of learned is like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that wasn't, it was too costly, you know, too yeah. costly in terms of energy and effort. And when I look at what you're doing with Pod Squeeze, it's like, it doesn't seem that costly. Like if you can literally yeah. spend most of your time doing accounting, then it means yeah, you have a good, a good business because... Mm -hmm. You know, and kind of like my Twitter course, my Twitter course was a way better business. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, and so I think that's what it taught me is that I'm never going to spend, I think, I mean, I hope I won't, you know, mm -hmm. I, I hope I will uh, keep myself accountable to that. But I don't think I'm, I'm capable again of spending five years on something that's not really working. No. Yeah. You know, because like now I see that, well, it can work like. If it works, it works. And if it works, you can take some weekends off. If it works, yeah. you can like not be stressed every night. Okay. So if if you don't feel that after like maximum 18 months, then you know, move something on, like wrong. do something move else. Yeah. Like it's it's not working, or like do a huge pivot, but like yeah, you know, there's something not working, and it's not your fault. It's not because you suck, it's not because whatever, it's because it's just like it's not the business that's gonna work. So try something else. Yeah. I think that's that's probably also one of my biggest lessons. You know, uh, one of the reasons why I started this podcast was to learn more about entrepreneurship and indie making. And um, I kind of kept seeing this with people that found a lot of success. Uh, they they iterated through their products really fast, and that's kind of what I told uh, with with Juan when we were working on our project. Our first project called Indie Lottery was not working at all. Oh yeah, and I remember then, Indie Lottery. It was completely yeah. like it didn't work at all. I remember. Yeah, I think I Joao, signed up, but yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, people were signing up, but there was no way to like really make money out of that. And and Jerome said like, no, let's keep going. You know, we need to try everything. And I was like, no, dude, if it's not working in a month, uh, if, if we don't see this traction that, you know, that people tell me about. And, and I've, I've interviewed people that say hey, there was this crazy traction. I was like, I want to find that traction. And then we exactly. found the post quiz. Yeah. You know, uh, th that was very wise of you because that's only because of the course that I understood that because with mm -hmm. the course, I had real traction. And I was like, oh, shit, that's what it feels like. Like, you know, and you can't miss it. Like, you you know, and I think you have the same with pot squeeze. Like, when you when you really have something, you know. You know you know that you have something. Yeah. Like, and so if you're, if you're in doubt, then you don't have anything. Then, mm -hmm. you know, forget it. Like, you don't have it. If you're in, if you have some doubt, oh, maybe I could, like, no, 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 you don't have it. Like, if you mm -hmm. had it, you would be like, oh, shit, like, how do I handle all these you know, customers? <laughs> it would exactly. just be like <laughs> overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, really quickly. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to hit like a ceiling. Because like, for example, with my course, eventually there was a ceiling of like... Oh, yeah, with okay. squeeze, we are feeling the same, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah it seems like you are. I was saying that also because I noticed mm -hmm. that you stopped growing for a while. And then, mm -hmm. you know, when you are at the ceiling, then, it's the, then you have to repeat the process. Like, okay, you can try something new and see if it has traction but to yeah. try to move to the next stage. But basically, it shouldn't take so long to go, to, like, let's say the first stage is like 10K per month. Um, it shouldn't take so long to get to that stage, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be pretty quick to get to that stage and then to move to the next stage, which is like, let's say, 30, then it's going to then it's gonna be a new phase. But yeah, uh, that you know, part I cannot talk about yet because we didn't reach, I don't know. Yeah, uh, if you, you don't know yet. That, but uh, yeah. So, um, so, so why do you think you're stuck now? Poor, I have, like, I, I think we caught a, a wave, you know, the AI yeah, of wave. Yeah, AI. And, yeah, and definitely we, we felt it. Um, so there was a huge, so we got, got convinced that that was the normal. We got convinced that like the, this amount of oh, customers Oh yeah, but that was just like a trendy thing. Yeah, yeah, it was just a trending. At the same time, a lot of competition started to pop up. And, Obviously, yeah. Uh, and what we're building now is, you know, the foundations for marketing. We're building SEO a lot. Like we're investing a lot on SEO, and we and we have we started this like already months ago, and we can suddenly start to see that actually SEO is working for us, and hopefully now oh, yeah. we'll start. Awesome you know, getting more traffic. And because we we tried, you know, email marketing worked really well for us, but we kind of already sent all the emails we could send. Uh, yeah. we, we caught the wave uh, and did like the, the product hunt launch, but now we cannot use that anymore. Uh, so now we are trying to build a foundation to to make this business grow. Uh, but to be honest, like, I don't know if, if, if it will work, you know, it could just be that our competitors will crush us or... Yeah, it's uh, possible. Yeah, definitely. Like what, what happened to like, you know, all the guys doing the AI uh, picture generators, all the yeah. indie guys doing that. And then eventually the big companies did it too for like 10 times cheaper. Exactly. So, you know. so the thing is like, also I see myself as, a, as an entrepreneur, as an indie maker. I don't see myself as the pot squeeze founder, right? So... Podsquiz is great, and I like the tool, I like the market, but I also like a thousand other markets and a thousand other ideas that I always have. You know, I'm always having new ideas, so it's okay. I'm okay. I'm in peace with if, if it dies and I have another business, I'm okay with that, you know? Okay, so and that's very that's interesting you say that because I came to the same conclusion myself is that I'm not interested in, like, running a huge business. I don't feel like it's my thing, and that's not even my goal. But like, if you clarify that, if you clarify that you're a maker, you like to create some things, yeah. surf a few waves, do different things. Well, once it was clear for me, you know, after the burnout, that that's actually why I failed is that I kept trying to build this business when I should have tried a bunch of different ones and have more fun and shit. Well, if you clarify that that's what you want, then I think what you need is you need an exit strategy. Because like, for example... Are you thinking that pot squeeze? So, like, if you say that, I feel like what the the conclusion of what you said. I mean, the next step of what you said is that. Well, then, are you planning to sell pot squeeze next year, so you can exit mm -hmm. instead of just letting it die and move on? Like, could you like try to sell it at the highest so like you can make maybe like hundred fifty or like two hundred? Uh, you know, what did you think? Do do you think of that? So, I I kind of. 
and Joan was asking the same, and I, I told him uh, what I'm about to tell you, is that like I have a three or two main uh, criteria that would make me decide to sell or, or to, to exit. Uh, first of all, the first one is that I'm not having fun anymore, so I don't, I'm not excited about it. Um, and if that happens, I will definitely decide, okay, if I'm not excited about it, I'll, I'll eventually okay, try to exit. Because, you know, first of all, I want to have fun, you know, like that's, that's my main goal. I want to be happy. Uh, so if I'm not happy with it, I will definitely sell it. Um, second is that if I, it suddenly is not paying enough, you know, if it's not paying the bills anymore, I'll need to find a way. So I either keep pot squeeze on the side and start something else, refocus, shift, or try to sell it, uh, so th those are like the main two criteria that will make me uh, sell. At the moment, you know, I'm having fun. I'm learning, you know, it's, it's a Okay, it's you're a still in this space. Okay, okay, it's cool. Okay, so yeah, no reason to think about that. Yeah, yeah. for me, not, not anymore, not yet. Uh, because again, it's, it's a great yeah. learning. It's, I love this and I'm excited and it's a challenge for me. I want to now see, okay, we stagnated a little bit. Can we go yeah, further? That, than yeah, this, if you can you know? move on to the next stage, that would be awesome. So that would be like a great learning experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it's interesting because we started this conversation in kind of a very dark, you know, mode where it's like talking about things that are important to talk about. But at the same time, of course, it can be a little bit more, um, you know, more dark, more sad. Yeah. And then we end up with, you know, in the bright light of, okay, I've actually <laughs> learned something amazing and now I have a great job and I'm, I'm getting paid and, and it's, it seems, and I'm getting healthier and everything. And you're learning a bunch of interesting lessons that you can now one day reapply if you decide to go back yep. to the exactly, industry. Yeah. At the same time, there's another part, you know, another partner of this business, uh, Lucy, right? Uh, yeah. And I'm also interested to, to know, like, what now? Like, where is she now? You know, uh, wh what is she doing? And how is she also now uh, seeing all of these changes and seeing that you are happy? Like, is she also finding something else? Like, is she, is she still stuck in uh, in the business? Like, what what's her perspective? So, this I think the difference is that eventually I decided I'm going to stop trying and I'm going to meditate and fix this burnout. So I mm -hmm. did a ton of like processing, grieving and like moving on, you know, right. with logology. But on her end, on her end, she was like trying, still trying to make it work. So she's like, I'm going to use it to get freelance customers to do some custom design jobs, uh, which are paying more, obviously. Um, and even though it's less fun and, so she kept trying to use it as a, and she does, like she basically has like one person per month doing a custom logo, which is going to, you know, be a couple thousand. Uh, and she, and she's still paying herself because we still had some cash on Logology. So she's still getting a salary until the end of the year. Um, but yeah, I think, and also the thing to know about Lucy is that at the same time we were doing this startup, she also started her career as a writer. So mm -hmm. she published her first book, I mean, her first like big book like three years ago, and she's just finishing the second one now, cool. which is taking a lot of her time, you know, because she has a, a publisher in Shane and Friends. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's a lot of what's on her mind. And so the I think the thing that's happened is that she still hasn't had really much time to process it and to be like it was like she was still telling me yesterday that yeah she's going to keep using the brand keep using logology and i'm like but like if you keep the company like it's so costly to keep the company you should go back to like solo freelance and if you want to just keep using logology but like it's just gonna cost you so much and then every time you want to do a change like you have to because like I, I can't like do spend much time to work on it like she has to hire someone like it's so expensive and like and I, and, and I feel like she's not uh like she just want to keep working on logology but I'm like she's it's not going to work you know financially you're not, you're going to just like and there's like no clear way of growing so you're just going to be like you know and and she and she she definitely isn't like in a very good place right now she's mm -hmm. like yeah she she doesn't feel amazing with money uh, because she hasn't found her footing yet with money again. Because, you know, right. she spent five years with me on Logology, and, like, now she's, like, 
And before that, she was making good money as a freelance graphic designer. Not right. as much as, you know, if you're a developer or something, because designers pay less, uh, get paid less, but she was making like a good money, you know. Um, so, but now, you know, it was five years ago. So, and she doesn't want to do that as much anymore because she wants to spend more time writing, but she doesn't make any money writing almost uh, because she do it more like as art. So, yeah, right now she's trying to find a way to balance both. So she's starting to do some uh, teaching gigs, you know, teaching design at a couple mm -hmm. of schools we have here, uh, a couple, you know, like uh, universities. Then you also, she also does a couple of freelancing gigs, you know, doing logos for people who need mm -hmm. like a custom thing. But uh, yeah, she, she doesn't feel, uh, she's not awesome. Yeah, she's not feeling mm -hmm. awesome. It seems that you moved on from logology and she didn't somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I really did. Uh, and I think I think she is moving on, but it's more like she's not really seeing a path to live the life that she wants. Right. Because you know? the reason she wanted to do logology is that she wanted to not have to do freelancing anymore and handle all the clients. She just wanted to design logos and be paid for that, you know, in a better situation, like in a way that she loves what she does uh, more. So it was tough for her to have to give up on that. And I think that's what she doesn't want to give up. She doesn't want to give up on, the you dream. know, working and doing design and, you know, mm -hmm. what she loves to do. And so she's basically still looking to find a way to make it work. Yes. Do you think that can eventually become a problem? You know that you moved on and she continues with the with the project. Oh no, I don't. I really don't. I just think it's a not a bad, not a good move. Like for, from her, I don't think. I just think like she's gonna waste so much money because like she's gonna pay so much taxes and so much shit instead of just going back to like solo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in legal terms, I'm like she's just gonna struggle for nothing. Um, but so yeah, so it's more like um. But I think maybe she needs time to uh, yeah. come to terms with that. So yeah, it's okay. You know, I mean, I, I make enough money, so like it's it's fine. Like, but uh, uh, and I understand that she needs more time because uh, I can be very intense when I like work on myself. I just do only that, and and I mean, I mean, I'm intense with everything. But mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I still I still remember so that when you came here to to Lisbon, and we yeah. did a, a live recording. Uh, It's funny because you said like, okay, Tiago, now I need to focus on Twitter. So please don't interrupt me. Now it's, you know, it's my Twitter time. Let's do yeah. it. I just like 30 minutes. And you really like, I would, just, you know, ask you a question. It's like, yeah, you'd answer, but like, okay, let me go back to this. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's interesting. That, that's intense. It's someone that like, you, you can get really laser focus into something. And that's, that's, that's interesting. I've never met anyone that would, that, you know, could do that. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, things but that's 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 <laughs> like there's like a flip side which is like burning out but yeah there's like yes a good yeah. side and a bad side mm. but yeah so so yeah i think because you know i speak to a lot of people who went through burnout and mine was you know pretty bad like like in terms of physical symptoms like now for example i have a lot of problems with my eyesight since that mm. that i never had any problems with and now basically When I go out at night, it's a nightmare because all the headlights and, you know, right. of the, I'm like blinded, but like literally, like I can't drive or anything mm -hmm. at night anymore. So I've had it pretty bad, but like by being so intense also in my recovery, uh, you know, I'm recovering pretty quickly because I know like a bunch of people after years, they're still like struggling. Right. Like really struggling. Like they still they are unhappy. They're like taking antidepressants. They're like doing all of this shit. And it's not really solving anything. They still feel bad. They still feel depressed. They still feel like like there's no meaning. And I'm like, I'm living my best life, I feel like. I mean, like yeah. close to it. Uh so that's because I'm very intense. So like, but it also means I need to accept that other people aren't gonna be as quick. So for example, I need to accept that Lucy she's gonna need a while, you know, because it was yeah. very bad and very stressful and she hasn't spent nearly as much time as I did to process it uh, because, you know, she's just not as intense and it's normal. Exactly, yeah. And so, yeah, she's basically still like pretty beat up 
Like, to be mm -hmm. honest, she's pretty beat up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I've learned as well, you know, working with, with, uh, with the co-founder is that, you know, people are just different. We are yeah. different. We process things in a different way. And, you know, I think communication is key. You know, always share what, what you're feeling because, again, you are, you're, you just, what you just described is really interesting. You're laser focused, uh, driven. You know, okay, now it's recover, 100% recover. Exactly. Now it's Twitter, 100% yeah. Twitter. And uh, not a lot of people are like this. You know, myself, I'm not like this. I'm more like, I'm all, all over the place. And, uh, yeah. of course, that, you know, it's, it's, it's just people working in different ways. Um, how, yeah. how would you now, like, what have you learned in terms of, like, taking care of yourself, your mental health? You know, because there's a lot of makers that are going through the same, you know, that are now in this process of, okay, I need to make money. Um, what, what, is, okay. like, what are your tips for them to either, like, recognize burnout and then prevent it? Okay, so that's one thing. And I feel bad for saying it because everybody told me about it. And every time I heard it, I was like, no, I don't need it. It's bullshit. Uh, it's therapy, uh, mm. and I never wanted to do therapy because I have a bias against most therapists that are like just bullshitting, and I have this bias because and that they're not telling me anything I'm going to learn that I didn't know, and I have this bias for two reasons. Is one, uh, I did like 15 years ago. I went to San Francisco to the Bay Area, and I did a a, a big uh, therapy kind of like workshop or something that I right. paid a lot of money for when I was very young with the money that I made from my very first, you know, kind of startup that I did. Mm -hmm. And and I met the most amazing therapist in the world. I met a guy who is now, uh, for example, uh, a partner with like Tony Robbins, you know, so this kind of, you know, you know, you know, Tony Robbins? No. You know? Okay, well, everybody knows Tony Robbins, so <laughs> it's okay. People listening will know Tony Robbins, don't worry. Is it an actor? <laughs> or a... No, it's like a, a basically a coach, like self-development, okay. kind of like guru, mm. like mm. crazy guy like this, incredible guy. And so, for example, a friend of mine that I made here who's a friend now, she's like a coach for C Silicon Valley CEOs, and she's like $900 an hour. What? And like, I did some work with her, but like for free because she's a friend now. And like in, in like 30 minutes with her, your life changes, literally. Like she really knows what stuff. See, know. but there I'm skeptic. How can someone justify paying 90 bucks, 900 bucks? Well, now like... I know because, you know, uh, okay, so let me, let me get back to it. So, so that's why I was so skeptical about therapists because most of them they are not like that they're just like most people who do that they're like i mean uh, in my bias and my assumption they just went to therapy school they learned a bunch of tricks and then they listen to you and you know there's not really a lot of passion or like vision for it yeah. so i was very like i was like if i can't get that woman that i know or like this amazing guy who works with tony robbins i'm like I don't want to go to like a stupid therapist in like little France, like in like a small, like a medium sized town in France. I didn't trust it. And Lucy went to a lot of therapists over the years for like different uh, things. Mm -hmm. And she was like, and every time, very often she had bad experiences of like mediocre experiences right. where like they're not the best, they're like not listening to her properly. So anyway, I finally found someone that was amazing here. And so I can tell you why it's so important now. So the person I found is like from the co-working space I go to, it was recommended to me. First of all, she's a therapist in like psychotherapy, but also energetic work. And that was a huge, for me, that was like a green flag of like, oh, okay. She understands the body. Like she does like Reiki massages. She does, she mm -hmm. does like, you know, feet, advanced feet, kind of like massages that were like, like 40 minutes uh, just massaging your feet, but in a way that's going to like touch every part of your body internally, you know, with like the points of pressure and shit, kind mm -hmm. of like acupuncture, kind of like, I mean, not right. that, but you know, this kind of energy work. And so I did a session with her and like a session is basically like a bit more than an hour and it's like 20 minutes, you talk about what's stressful, like what's like on your mind, okay? Okay. Then after that, she tells you, okay, so that these kind of things will be located in your body in these places. Then she does like 40 minutes massaging you to unlock these areas in your body. 
okay? What? And then you do another 20 minutes or like 10, 10 to 15 minutes debriefing what you think now about your problems and now that it's unlocked and like it's crazy the amount of progress you make. And what it made me understand about therapy is that it's not that it's, she's going to tell you something that you don't know because like she's, it's only things you know, but she's going to give you a perspective and make you understand. And basically, you have all the pieces of the puzzle, but the therapist, if it's a good one, like the one I found, it's going to help you put the pieces together in a way that makes sense and that you can be relaxed about. Because you can usually see the problems, the potential, and you have, and it's a mess in your head and you're stressed, and especially if you're a founder. But there's a way to put all the pieces together and to take certain decisions in a way that is uh, like very, uh, you know, aligned. And by mm -hmm. doing that, I mean, every, every problem just disappears. Like it's okay, you know? And I'm like, dude, if I had her from the day one of Logology, it would have made a world of difference because I wouldn't have stayed stuck up on some stupid ideas for three years. Because like right. I would have told her after like three weeks, oh, this is stressing me out. And then she wouldn't have told me what to do, but she would have listened, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like reflected it back at me, found in my body where it was located, unlock it, and then I would have been free to let go of that yeah. stupid ass idea that my ego was clinging to and I could have moved on and, mm -hmm. you know, not make so many mistakes. So now I will never live a day without a therapist. I will see her or a person like her for the rest of my life because it's such a superpower when you have the right one kind of like the right co-founder it's like a superpower mm -hmm. so yeah that is really interesting uh in many ways first of all i think it's great advice uh to find a good a good therapist and to somehow guide you through this this uh, process because it's a very stressful process uh at the same time unlocking something you know it's 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 weird like how does that work is isn't it okay you okay. just get more relaxed no 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 uh, okay let's say for okay um let's say um you are hesitating because most stress comes from hesitation so you are hesitating okay. about a decision for right. part squeeze you don't okay. know and it's stressing you out like for example, should you keep uh, doubling down on, should you keep doing SEO? Should you open new marketing channels? Right. You're know, like hesitating and like it's messing with you. And so it's making you procrastinate. It's making you waste time. And so you go to see her, you talk to, uh, and I say her because it's a she, but it can be a man, obviously. And you tell her that you have this stress and this hesitation and like, okay, I don't know where I should go. Like it, and it's, I mean, I probably, the, the first thing is you probably don't even know that it's stressing you out. So you just go and you just talk to her about what's on your mind. And then after a couple of minutes, by guiding you, she will get to that point where like you realize, oh, this is what's stressing me out. It's this decision that I, I'm stuck on. And so then once she knows that, uh, she will ask you where in your body does you, do you feel that decision? Like when you when you talk about it, what part of your body is kind of like, feeling different or tense mm -hmm. or weird. So for me, for example, that was my chest for like the last thing I talked about. That was in my chest that I felt it and she could feel it too because she's like very sensitive to energies. So then she gives me the massage and she focuses on my chest and like on, you know, evacuating all the energy that is stuck in my chest because my chest was stuck, okay? And then at the end of that, well, it's and it's funny because last day, last one I did was like five days ago, and to and 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 then for the next couple of weeks you will feel in your body that the kind of like stuckness that you had in your chest and so around that decision is gonna kind of like progressively dissolve. And for example, this morning it was so weird. Uh, this big decision that was a different topic, more personal one was mm -hmm. stuck in, in me. And this morning I could feel after four or five days, it really started leaving me, but it was really felt. And I, 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 I had to take a nap at like 11 a.m. because I could feel it in my body. It was really evacuated. 
And so then I had 10 times more clarity, you know, because every time you have a thought, especially something you're like thinking about a long time, then it starts kind of like getting stuck somewhere in your body. Um, you know, usually in the same areas, it can be your head, it can be your throat, it can be your chest, it can be your belly. Usually it's going to be these areas. And then if you unlock it, then you have clarity again. And the decision, it doesn't feel like you even have to decide. It just feels like it's obvious. You know, it just feels like, oh, okay, that's what I wanted to do. Because usually when you are struggling with a decision, you're not really struggling. You know what you want to do, but you're afraid or you're like, you know, feel bad about it. So you hesitate. That is very interesting. So when you're a founder, I mean, dude, having that by your side. Mm. So like, for example, her, she's, she costs like uh, 80 or like 70, depending on what I do, but like 70 for one session. So let's say if I start a startup again, I want to be at my best. I'm going to like have it like, because like it's pretty intense energetically. So it's best to do only once every two weeks. So mm -hmm. it would cost me like, let's say 150 a month. Or if you don't do that because she does energy work and you only have like a regular therapist, maybe it costs you like 200 a month and you go every week. But like, if you really find a good person, because like the problem of building a startup is that a bad decision and getting stuck in your ego and your arrogance and your fantasies is going to cost you so much. This is yeah. what is going to make you fail. Is yeah, these yeah, stupid yeah. Uh, uh, ego-driven decisions. This is what causes failure the most yeah. uh, if you look down to it. So having a therapist by your side that helps you not change your mind, but like look at the pieces of the puzzle from a different perspective, more objective, and let you take the decision more freely, then you're going to like... I mean, I would have saved literally two years of, of wasted time on mm -hmm. logology with that, you know. So that would have paid for itself 10 times over. Yeah. That's that's uh, very interesting that you say that because I feel um, that doing this podcast, and I always say this, doing this podcast was very therapeutical for me, and it, it is. Oh, yeah. Because I, I speak every week, you know, about whatever I'm going through, and then I listen to it. And, oh, and I, yeah, good point. Yeah. And every time I listen to this, um, it might sound a bit egocentric about Tiago listening to himself, but it really <laughs> helps me. It really helped me to unlock these um, ideas. And I, I feel the same. I feel that sometimes, you know, there's something that is stuck in my head and then I do the podcast, then I listen to it and somehow I, I come to a conclusion and, I, and yeah. then I make my decision. So, um, yeah, I totally agree. I think, you know, mental health is really important. And and not a lot of people speak about this, but it's really important in the life in the life cycle of of a founder, uh, and finding a way to to somehow cope with this and and a way to make better decisions and to be healthy is crucial. So I, I think definitely a therapist. Um, and you know, I'm just well. thinking they do they do couples therapy, obviously, mm -hmm. but you could literally do co-founder therapy yeah. because with Lucy, me not delegating was a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. And that was caused, as I said earlier, you know, by a couple of reasons. One that was like tied to her and one that was tied to me. Yeah. But if I had gone to therapy and maybe also do some specific co-founder therapy, maybe once a month or once a quarter, where you just do a session with your co-founder, with a therapist, and you look at the problems. That's a good point. You know, that's like something, dude, that's like, maybe that's a startup idea that we have right here, you know. <laughs> Like uh, uh, therapy as a service for startup founders, you know, uh, a task, you know, <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, a good point. Um, to have couples therapy for co-founders. And it's something that, well, again, not in therapy, but it's something that I really try a lot, which we're like, okay, let's speak, whatever, let's be open. And if there's something... There are a few, like I shared that in my podcast, there are, I think, one or two times where we're having we're struggling because actually for something that was similar to what we were describing, you know, João is a designer and uh, I felt that he, he wanted to do things a certain way and I was very stuck into like, no, I want to, you know, be in charge. And, and what really helped was to, you know, trust him and say, okay, you're responsible yeah. for marketing. You're responsible for, that's your realm. So... Whatever you want to do, 
do because you know and let's just I see how it you. goes you know and maybe it's not yeah. gonna be what you want but like let's just see how it goes um that's something i i'm learning and that's what's helpful with my job now is i'm i, I i'm delegating all the time and that's awesome because i see there's like i work with a designer as well i'm like mm -hmm. ah, i don't really like the way <laughs> he designs shit you know i don't really but i'm like you know what it's not my company they picked this designer <laughs> I'm just going to lead him as best as I could. But at the same time, I'm going to let him do his thing. Yeah. And then he does its thing and it's okay. You know, it's not what I would have done, but it works, mm -hmm. you know, and that's like a big thing, you know, yeah. that you got to learn, like, and especially at your own company and be like, be able to like be okay with like somebody else, you know, doing their own thing. And they're going to have, for example, I was so stuck in like, my way of doing marketing that Lucy, who doesn't do, do social media, she mostly wants to write articles for a blog. I was like, yeah, but it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be too complicated. So I was always pushing back against it and kind of like getting in the way and preventing her from doing that. Yeah. We're like, no, don't do that. Keep doing logos. I'm going to do Twitter. I'm going to stay in charge of that. But, you know, if I should have just let her, yeah, you know, because she writes amazing, you know, articles. I was like, yeah, just just write uh, the blog and I will do it your way and it's going to be fine because I, I always wanted to to edit what she was writing to make it more concise because oh, yeah, she good. can be like very, you know, because she can be very verbose, which I find annoying. But uh, at the same time, it's <laughs> uh, like when I step, when I take a step back, I look at it like, no, oh, it's fine. Like, it's okay. It's not like as marketing style as I would have done, but you know, it would have been perfect. Like it would have been enough, and and maybe it would have even been better because we didn't even test it in the end. So I don't even know. Maybe I was completely wrong, and her way was better. You know that yeah. would be the even yeah. better lesson in there. I don't even know, but yeah. so you know, yeah, definitely. There's a lot. I to... mean, I totally can relate to what what you were saying though. That we want the company to succeed so bad that we somehow are not willing to take risks. And if we don't think that's the way to do it, if you don't think yeah. that this person is landing the plane properly, then let me take the, the commands and I will land it myself. And yeah, what, what changed yeah. with, with John was that I, I, I just thought, you know, he wants the best for a company as much as I do. So I need to trust him. I need to trust that oh, whatever wow, he's, I love doing, that. he's doing this in, in the best way. Uh, I love that. I love that thinking. Yeah. yeah. And that helps. Wow. That definitely helped. Yeah, uh, it's it's terrible because when you say that, I'm like, wow, I never said that to myself uh, about Lucy for the five years of Logology. I never uh, thought that. I always thought, I'm like, that I was putting myself under this pressure for this company to succeed more than her, which is yeah. not true. But it's because I was mostly, you know, looking at myself. And yeah. so... Wow, yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I didn't think of that. And now it's hitting me. And I'm like, oh, shit. Wow. You know, and like, and it's been a process, you know, we've been going through, you know, uh, with Lucy as like me realizing uh, how shitty of a co founder I was. <laughs> uh, and that's like, that's tough because like that's some that's not just my co-founder, that's someone I love, you know. So that's tough. Yeah, that's that's double yeah. double hard. And to be honest, it's something that they don't teach us in school. They don't teach us this anywhere. Uh I mean relationships yeah. in general you learn by you know being present in relationships, but uh with co-founders <laughs> like building a business, everything, all of these things, they don't teach you. They don't say like, okay, be be aware of this or like have a, a therapist maybe that could help. And what I noticed is that there's a, so much lack of knowledge on this profession of being, for, for me, it's a profession. Being an entrepreneur is a profession, you know, like being a yeah, doctor or a developer. Okay. But there's yeah. no, not enough data and, and teaching on how to be a proper entrepreneur. Yeah. And, all, and, the, and all the teaching out. is going to be about, you know, business. PC and yeah, business. It, and, it's going to be business training, yeah. but it's not going to be like, it's kind of like if you're an athlete, professional athlete, exactly. you, now you yeah, have like yeah. mental coaches and stuff. Uh, yeah. But you don't have that. Like if you're an entrepreneur, you don't have all these all these things that are easy to access or like common. Mm. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm always comparing that as well. Like, yeah, this is like being an athlete, you know? When you do a profession, you do something professionally, it's like being an athlete. You're trying to be the best you can be. And to do so, there's a lot of different tools that you can use, and one of them being, of course, some someone or something to support you mentally. Um, to to finish this up, I you know I don't I, are you a fan of like X Men, like the no the, the I mean movies? I know it I know it okay I'm not, the, I'm not a fan no I'm, I'm I appreciate not, it you know yeah. but that's it there's a scene there's one I remember this one movie where I think there's the mutants they lose their power. And, okay. and Magneto, which is the one that basically controls, uh, is the bad yeah. guy somehow and controls metal, whatever. In the end of the movie, they are playing chess. And it, it somehow you can see that he's able to somehow move the piece a little bit, like he's regaining his power. Okay. And that's what I feel oh, yeah, every okay. time I see you tweet. You know, every time I see you tweet, <laughs> there's a little tweet and be like, oh, is he regaining his power? Is like, <laughs> is he coming back, you know, with all of this new knowledge to somehow retry uh, in, in a different way? So I guess that's my yeah. my last question for you today, Dago. Is that uh, are you regaining your powers or or not? <laughs> <laughs> I am I am regaining my powers, but yes. <laughs> I I don't plan on starting again uh, for now. Okay. Uh, I really I'm I mean I'm learning with this job. I mean I'm not learning that much in terms of like the job itself. It's more like I'm learning how to be healthy and do my job in a way that I enjoy and mm -hmm. delegate and let go. And all of these kind of like soft skills, like skills related to my ego, like all of these things, I'm learning to get used to that. And I want to keep doing that because it's so useful to, I want this balance to be my new normal, you know? And so maybe once I feel that this balance is my new normal, I will want to come back. And but now, and I, and I have so many ways I want to come back. But like, I have a friend Nicola who lives uh, near here, who is one of the other French indie makers, mm -hmm. and he and we met like a couple of weeks ago. We had dinner, and it was awesome because we were thinking maybe next time we do a startup, we we do it together. You know, mm -hmm. we, we become co-founders. So we had some, we want to do a marketing uh, center startup for indie hikers. So that would be, and we'll probably start, you know, with an agency. Because I think when you start with an agency, you can get like, uh, you know, some revenue quickly and then use that revenue to invest in building a product instead yeah. of having the always pressure of succeeding with a product, which is 10 times harder. Mm -hmm. So you know, some ideas, but yeah, right now it's about, I am regaining my powers, but it's also new powers. You know, it's not just ah. the same powers as before. It's like new things of like, I, I'm not the same. Like I'm literally not the same. Like I don't want to be, I don't think I'm ever going to regain the power to overwork myself seven hours a week because I don't <laughs> think yeah. it's my power anymore. I mean, I think it's cool, but like, it's, there's the dark side. <laughs> I would rather power, like yeah. <laughs> I, I'm more interested in like gaining the power of uh, knowing how to have 20 amazing hours that are useful mm -hmm. because I go to a therapist because I delegate work because I stop you know doing all these mistakes and I have like and I take the right decisions that I can make as much progress in these 20 hours as yeah. in these 70 that's more like the power that I want to get. I want to, that's the power. I, and I feel like I'm developing this power right now. Um, mm. this is but incredible. yeah, I have, I have mm. some of my powers back because now that's I can amazing. tweet again. I started tweeting regularly again. So, you know, it's coming back and I'm, and I have a, a ton of lessons I want to share that I plan on sharing. It's just that now, since I don't, uh, I'm not going to hurt myself to do it. So I'm going to mm. wait until, you know, yeah, I, I have a morning, that is pretty quiet at my job. I feel inspired. Maybe I'm going to spend an hour writing it, you know, mm -hmm. during my break or something. Um, and, you know, or in the weekend or in the evening. And yeah, but I don't put myself under pressure anymore. So that's new powers, basically. I have to say something. I am excited to watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's more excited, right? Than just yes. like the same old Definitely. powers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Dago, thank you so much for, uh, you know, talking about this openly and sharing this and, and teaching us that 
even when things don't go your way, doesn't mean that you cannot learn from it. Uh, I think that's a powerful lesson. And I think a lot of makers will listen to this and um, consider this while, you know, the, the techniques you just gave for them while building their products and as well the option of finding a job that they are in love with and, and learning and regaining their strength to then one day with new powers, uh, you know, face and, and write a new movie and, and make a new, new product. So, yeah, thank you so much, man. Always a pleasure talking with you. Thanks, man. Yeah, I really love it. Like, it's so chill talking with you every time. So that's why I talk so easily about stuff because you're so, you're an amazing podcast host. There's like no pressure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks. I love doing these. I don't know if we'll do a fourth one one day. Probably. I think we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we will. That will be fun. I mean, the that listeners the want one. it. Yeah, like, there's always something happening. So, yeah. And that's a wrap of my conversation with Dagobert. If you are a first-time listener or you just simply want to re-listen to my first conversations with Dago, it all started in episode 146. It was the first time that I met Dago and back then it was just the beginning of his Twitter journey. If I remember correctly, he only had around 5,000 followers on Twitter. Then I interviewed his co-founder and wife, Lucy in episode 168 and the more recently I interviewed Dago about his Twitter course and the enormous success he had with it. That's episode 278. If you want to support the Wannabe Entrepreneur podcast, you can do so by joining our community for indie makers. It's a Slack-based community and you'll meet a lot of people like yourself that either are already further along in their indie journey or are just starting. It costs $10 per month and you'll be also able to support this podcast. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and see you next time.